What's cracking, big dogs? Welcome, bike, to the channel. Welcome, bike, to the headquarters. My name is Nicholas. This is BDGE, and it is Sunday, so I'm asking you why you yelling. It's actually Monday for y'all. I'm filming this on Sunday night. I'm not going to lie. I'm a, little, I'm a little tossed up. I had a few margaritas today. It's been a surgical Sunday. Not as surgical as last Sunday, but... <clears throat> But we are, uh, we do have some green running through our veins. And I want to kick the week off wonderfully, beautifully, as always, with a draft performed, operated, surgically repaired on the Underdog Fantasy platform. Underdog Fantasy, the link to download this app, which is the single greatest place to do your fantasy football mock drafts to prep for your actual draft, is on Underdog Fantasy, okay? Link down below will take you right to the App Store, whether you're on iOS or Google. This is a 12-team draft. They randomize where your spot is whenever the draft fills. I am at the 106, which is a cool spot because I haven't been there, but it's actually a terrible spot because I don't want to pick from there. Actually, no, you're right. I don't want to pick from the sixth spot. The sixth spot stinks right now. If you want to be in the beginning of the draft, you want to be in the first five spots because you have C-Mac, Cook, Henry, Kamara, and Zeke are going to be the next two picks off the board, which makes my pick stink and Saquon just continues to fall and I get it he won't tell you when he's going to be ready I still think Saquon's going to be fine I still think he's going to be a beast maybe he's not as strong for the first month of the season but he will finish strong he will finish strong unlike me in bed okay Saquon at the 106 this is the typical draft star that you're seeing and uh, we'll see Saquon continue to fall as we uh, get news of players going starting on the pup, and let me be the first to tell y'all the pup in the off season, the pup in the summer, the pup at this point in the NFL season, which is like one percent into it, doesn't fucking matter. Okay, doesn't matter. It's a technicality. I don't even know what the reason is. But I don't even why do they have a pup list right now? There's no reason to have a pup list when it doesn't affect your roster spots. It doesn't affect how many players you could have there. Maybe it does. Maybe that's the thing. Regardless, uh, the actual pup, when the season starts, means that you have to be out for the first six weeks of the season, okay? That's the big one. If the regular season kicks off and these guys are on the pup, then you got a problem. For now, anyone landing on the pup, not a not a concern to me, okay? Saquon, we're seeing names like Amari Cooper. Like, obviously, the, it's something to monitor, but that is the best that we can do there, okay? We could just monitor them, but I don't think we could judge that based on being on the pup in the middle of July. We also just heard Joe Burrow came off the pup or is not going to be on the pup, which is big news. And that's something that I had not, uh, again, pup is, does not really decide whether or not you're healthy. I, I don't think at this point you could still be unhealthy and not end up on the pup list right now, but that is definitely moving in the positive direction with a guy like Burrow. I had been nervous about drafting him, especially his underdog ADP is out of control right now. It's like quarterback nine ahead of Tom Brady, Ryan Tannehill Stafford, uh, which I will not get behind. All right. Like a girl with a stinky, you know where that's going. I'm just not getting behind it. Uh, we just need him to be on his legs and we need him to be mobile for him to hit that ceiling. And I'm not sure, even with them saying he's healthy, I'm not sure we, we get that out of him. Regardless, we have uh, Saquon at the 6, Kelsey at the 107. See, that's why the 6 spot kind of stinks, because you have to take a less than 100% Saquon, and then you're choosing between these other guys. I'm not taking Travis Kelsey in the first round. I just don't want an, uh, an early tight end. Eckler's a guy that I've been getting higher and higher and higher on. As you guys know from the video I made a couple weeks ago, uh, elite upside running backs in fantasy football this year. It uh, doesn't really get more uh, more upside-y, more upside-ish than Austin Eckler with the offense, the improvements of the offensive line, things like that. So I'm sitting here at the 2-7, and man, they the, the these drafts are just getting the value absolutely sucked out of them. I don't want Darren Waller at the 2-7. That's so early. The running backs left here. Clyde, you know, I don't have a lot of shares of Clyde, and uh, a lot of smart people like Clyde. I think he'll be fine. I don't know if he has a ceiling that we particularly love, but I'm actually going to do something a little different here. I'm going to take DeAndre Hopkins, and there's a reason why. I'm going to take DeAndre Hopkins because I have – absolutely fallen in love and become enamored with Kyler Murray this year. 
And if you've watched any of these drafts, right, these are best ball drafts. So for those of y'all that are new, let me introduce you to the underdog fantasy platform. You do best ball drafts on here, okay? So it is not your traditional league where you actually manage your roster in season. You draft an 18-team league. It's only quarterbacks, RBs, wide receivers, and tight ends. So only the four skills positions. Each week, the software takes the best player that performed at each position for you and starts them. One quarterback, two running backs, three wide receivers, one tight end, and one flex. So you draft an 18-man roster. So you're probably going to draft two quarterbacks, maybe five to six running backs, seven to eight wide receivers, and two to three tight ends. And then it starts the best player based on those roster settings each week. So uh, in this type of format, you really like to do stacks. Meaning if you're going to take a quarterback, you like to have their top pass catcher, whether it's a wide receiver or wide receiver two or a tight end or something, because usually when one has a good week, the other has a good week and it just ups the ceiling of, of your overall weekly team's performance. So with Kyler rising in my rankings, I'm hoping to get him. I'm, I'm getting him a lot in like the fifth round. And since I have the sixth pick, you know, the five, uh, I'll have the five, the five, six. And I think that's reasonable to where to get Kyler. So I'm hoping to stack Kyler and DeAndre Hopkins. So I took D hop over Clyde for that simple factor of stacking. And that's something I'm probably going to be doing a little bit more in, in regular redraft leagues as well, where you're actually managing your team. So in best ball, you don't actually manage any waivers. There, there are no waivers, which is why you draft a very large team. There are no trades in season, all that yada, yada, yada. Okay, so we have Clyde at the 2-8. Again, he's just not a guy I think. What the fuck, Brady? Brady, Brady, I see what you're doing here. You're trying to piss me off. You take Derrick Henry and then DJ Chark? I don't care. We're all playing for money here. It's good for me. More money in my fucking pocket. Not that I need it. Uh, so we have DK at two nine. So I think DK has overall wide receiver one upside. If, if I'm being honest here, uh, I really like that pick of C I'm telling you this ADP is just because, because we are playing with real money. These drafts are all real money. By the way, you, you win money. If you're, if you finish in the top three, uh, spots in the league, because of that, everyone's ADP is sharp as shit. And the, sh and the drafting is very sharp. I am actually going to take Chris Carson here. He, I have a lot of third round Chris Carson and I'm not upset about it. Uh, I wanted to go with CeeDee Lamb there in case the fallback on DeAndre Hopkins with Kyler doesn't work. I can either get Dak or, or Kyler Murray in the fifth round to stack with. I'm getting higher on CeeDee Lamb as we are learning that Amari Cooper started on the pup list. It's just something that he's dealt with, these ankles, these foots. It's becoming a fucking problem. It's becoming a problem for all these damn wide receivers. So Michael Thomas is going to be out for a long time. Let me, let, me, uh, let me be the person to tell you this. Do not draft Michael Thomas in fantasy football this year. I will repeat that one more time. Do not fucking draft Michael Thomas in fantasy football this year. I don't care if it's the ninth round, if it's the 10th round, if it's the 12th round. I don't care if this is the heavyweight fight of the world and they put it on pay-per-view and they let it go 25 rounds deep. Do not fucking draft Michael Thomas this year. Something that we say on this on this on this podcast, on this YouTube channel, on this featured film novelistic YouTube channel that I have. Do not find injuries in fantasy football. They will find you. This is like the prototypical, like this is what you guys were not seeing with AJ Green. Okay. When a player has this foot injury, we already know he's going into the season with an injury. The, the it's going to linger. I wouldn't be surprised if he missed the entire season. I wouldn't be surprised if he missed the entire season. He tries to come back in like week 13, re-injures it in week 15, and he's out for the rest of the year. It's going to be a problem, okay? So don't draft fucking Michael Thomas. The other guys that we're looking at behind him are, yes, Traquan Smith gets into uh, interesting. Marcus Callaway gets a little bit interesting. Kawan Baker is a guy that I've been telling you guys to pick up in Dynasty gets a little bit interesting, but overall it hurts a lot of the players on the offense, probably except for Kamara because Kamara is going to start getting like 98 bajillion targets. Um, as we saw in the games in which he did not, uh, I might have to take Kyler here, huh? Josh Allen's already off the board. Let's see what running backs we got left. Eh, I don't hate Josh Jacobs here, but I don't love him. Should we take Michael Thomas? Don't fucking take Michael Thomas. All right. Uh, telling you these drafts each week I do them with you guys. They get sharper and sharper and sharper and sharper. I'm probably going to take Kyler here, man. I'm probably going to take Kyler here. I don't want to miss out on him. And I feel like I will. Cause we got a bunch of cunts that we draft with. And, uh, I am so, I am so high on Kyler. 
what you guys don't realize, and you know, I'm, I'm, I'm plugging away at the draft guide. And for those of y'all that pre-ordered, it will hopefully be available. I've been getting on calls with the web development team every single day, but I'm hoping in the next week or two, um, Kyler Murray last year, before he injured his shoulder in week 11, was literally on pace for 485 fantasy points last year. And what does that mean to you guys? That would have been the single highest fantasy point total of any player in the history of Earth. In the history of Earth, in the history of New York, where I'm located, Manhattan, New York, the USA, Western Hemisphere, Milky Way, Earth Galaxy. All right? You can't get more defined than that. Kyler Murray would have had the single greatest fantasy football season of all time. It was previously held by Patrick Mahomes and Lamar Jackson, who were like two points apart in 2018 and 2019. Kyler Murray's season last year would have been four and a half points per game higher than those two seasons. All right? Not four and a half points total. Four and a half points per game higher than those two. What Kyler might do this year, he might fuck around and and actually win you a, a league in a one quarterback league. So I am no longer passing up on Kyler Murray in any draft. They add Rodney Hudson onto the line. They add Rondell Moore. They add the absolute GOAT, A.J. Green. Here's, here's the thing. A.J. Green this year is what we've wanted Michael Thomas to be. Got some fucking news for you. For those of you that are new to the channel, that's a joke, all right? We've been telling you not to draft A.J. Green because he keeps entering the year with foot injuries like Michael Thomas is this year. Those things don't go away. So, that being said, Kyler Murray is a must-draft quarterback in every format. Every league you're in, in every format, you draft Kyler Murray. No if, ands, or Kim Kardashian butts about it, all right? So, we're getting into the 5-6 area where we still have a lot of uh, solid wide receivers on the board. I have no Javonta Williams shares. Miles Gaskin, I feel like, is just ripping down ADP. I feel like he is just ripping down the board. Goes later and later. I'm going to try to grab him in the sixth if I can. See, people are going earlier and earlier with the quarterbacks. I bet you he has a stack. There you go. Ooh, nice little stack there. Nice little stack there by the Sharp. He has uh, Russ, DK, and Tyler Lockett. That is a nice stack. He's got Kamara to go along with it. Uh, he's got George Kittle. Nice little team you're putting together there, Sharp. What do we got here? So we're looking at the running backs, and I am not in on fifth round Travis Etienne. No fucking way. A little too early for those tight ends. So we'll probably look at one of these mid-round wide receivers. I think Deontay Johnson has way more upside than Adam Thielen. Uh, probably has more upside than Kenny Galladay. So he's my favorite mid-round wide receiver in this area. I probably actually would have went with T. Higgins if T. Higgins was available instead of DJ. But we'll settle for DJ. We'll settle for a, uh, a light 140 targets. Okay, Big Ben is looking. You know what's my favorite thing about Twitter? Is like, they'll be like, Big Ben. They put up pictures like, Big Ben. There you go, Glizzy God. That's the worst pick I've ever seen. Um, The rumor just came out, that, or the report just came out today, Michael Thomas might miss 12 to 16 weeks. That's like the entire season. There'll be like pictures of uh, Big Ben. It'll be like last year versus this year. And it'll be like PFF does some corny shit always. And we'll just be like fire emojis like everywhere. And it's literally the same fucking thing. Anyone who's ever literally any human who's ever turned lights on knows that you look different in different lighting. The big, big Ben, like one picture was in uh, underneath a cloud. The other picture was like in a sun looks exactly the same, but people just lose their shit. It'll be literally someone squat like cr fucking miles Gaskin can squat 135 pounds, like literally one plate on each side. And then, like, half of fantasy Twitter will be like, imagine fading Miles Gaskin this year with, like, the emoji puffing smoke out. Yeah, I fucking hate Twitter. I fucking, I, I love y'all, but I hate Twitter. Sorry. Um, so, yeah, case in point, just the fucking what happens on Twitter doesn't matter. Any, if you go to someone's profile and you go to the media part of it where it shows pictures and videos, and if anyone is reposting, like, training camp clips from guys, that's auto unfollow. Auto mute their fucking analysis. Sorry, back to regularly scheduled programming. So this team so far, we got Kyler Murray, we got Saquon Barkley, we got Chris Carson. Oh, you guys can't see the team. I'm sorry. Let me minimize my fucking dumb ass so I can stop yelling at you guys. Kyler Murray, Saquon Barkley, Chris Carson, DeAndre Hopkins, Deontay Johnstein. Um, also, yes, to finish my conclusion on underdog, if you guys are new to underdog, shit, I totally forgot. Uh, please use the promo code BDGE when you deposit 10 bucks. Again, all of these drafts are for money and you win money, okay? So you're not paying money just to mock draft. These are actual drafts where you're competing against each other. You just don't have to do any in-season work, which is 
most fantastic fucking part about it. Because if you're in a lot of leagues like I am, I'm in like eight redraft leagues. I don't have 20 more fucking, I don't have brain power. My brain is big, but it ain't that big. I don't have enough brain power to manage 20 more teams. This is the best way to do that. This is the best way to get your draft on. This is the best way to understand the trends that are happening throughout the year. Damn it, I would have really liked uh, somebody. Fuck, there's no value left anywhere. Uh, Mark Andrews, huh? He's dropping a little bit. I see him dropping a little bit. Javonta Williams. You guys seem to like Javonta Williams a lot more than I do. Uh which means I probably need to diversify a little bit. So I'll grab a Javante share here, even though he is not a guy that I'm super high on this year. But down at pick 67, I'm okay with it. Um, it's below ADP. He's typical ADP of 63 and a half. So if he falls to me at value, I guess I'm okay with it. I just think he's in a situation where we won't see Javante take over the workload until eight weeks into the season. And that's when we make our fucking run. That's when we make our run. Oh, man. You know what else I just fucking realized? Darrell Henderson is sitting there. I should have took D. Anderson. I should have taken D. Anderson. You got to remember these things. You'd think, I, you, you'd think I didn't do this every single day. You'd think all I did was not do fantasy football stuff every day. But lo and behold, here I am letting Darrell Henderson fall past me in the sixth round in a 12-team league. Is he going to fall all the way back to me? No fucking way. He ain't, he ain't getting biked to me. No shot. The, sh- the, sharp, the sharp's going to grab him before I can. No fucking doubt about it. Actually, Brady's only got one running back, too. Verzi's sitting here like... Shouldn't have drafted two fucking tight ends and three running backs when D. Henderson is chilling on the board. Taking Robbie Anderson over D. Henderson. Want to know how I know you don't have a fucking brain? All right, let's go. Let's go. So here's here's one thing I will say about the D. Henderson situation. Um, he does not have the ceiling of Cam Akers. He's just not as good of a running back. However, he will be fine. He will be a nice RB2. The problem, okay, so on underdog, there's also multiple different formats you could do, right? You can join, you could literally do a three man draft, you could do a six man draft, a 10 man draft, or a 12 man draft. So, depending on your league format, your league type, you could practice different things. They also have tournaments, right? Like regular GPPs. If you play DraftKings or whatever, they got that shit too. Where in those, you don't want to be drafting a guy like Darrell Henderson. The reason is because when you're in a tournament, you're going up against a million teams, right? So you're looking at whatever edge you could possibly get. Now, up until this point, there is going to be one team in every league, in every draft that has 12th round Darrell Henderson, okay? If you start to take third round Darrell Henderson, fourth round Darrell Henderson, or I guess fucking seventh round Darrell Henderson at this point, um, you are already losing a monster edge because every team that has 11th round, 12th round Daryl Henderson has a huge advantage at the running back position over you who are using a 4th, 5th, 6th round spot on Darrell Henderson. Oh, baby. Is he going to fall bike to me? Am I tripping right now? Did I drink too many margs? Did something happen to Henderson today? Let's go. Let's go. That was That was crazy. That was crazy as hell. I can't imagine he's going lower than 7-6 in any drafts. Any of y'all that have done underdog drafts in the in the recent years, um, why the fuck did I say recent years? In the recent days after the Cam Akers news, where is Darrell Henderson going in your drafts? What? Dexter's bike? Oh. Did Earl Henderson pass away today? Did he have too many marks? There's got to be some news. There you go. That's the first thing I see. Fucking corny ass PFF with a rocket ship emoji. Like whoever these interns are, bro. Like not. I, I wouldn't even hire you to fire you. I get a lot of pleasure out of firing people, especially interns. And I can't like. Oh my god, the eyeball emoji. I've never seen a cringier account in my whole existence and i follow a lot of people on tiktok okay well darrell henderson fell to me at seven six and i feel like that's absurd and i feel like that shouldn't be happening and i feel like if you're gonna go on to underdog and you're gonna draft 
Make sure you use the promo code BDGE when you deposit 10 bucks. Because when you do that, when you deposit $10 and you use promo code BDGE, they're going to give you $25 on top of it to play with. $25 freaking dollars on top of it to play with. That's a lot of fucking money. So you're getting 25 free dollars to play with. So you're getting 35 in your account just for throwing 10 down. You can do 11 drafts and use the other $2 to buy carrots. I whipped out carrots last video. And thank you guys all for uh, the advice on the seasoning. I asked for seasoning. A lot of you guys are like dipping in ranch. I asked for seasoning because I'm looking for a zero calorie spiciness, a zero calorie uh, flavor enhancer. And you guys are all like, just throw fucking olive oil on, throw it on a fucking cheeseburger. I'm like, dog, dog. Sorry. Um, so, but th some of you guys actually had useful seasoning choices for my carrots. So thank you. But I had carrots, and I had, they're on my bed right now because I didn't want to eat them on the camera because I just seem like a psycho if I'm eating carrots two videos in a row. It's like weird, right? All right. Good fucking talk. Oh, this is spicy. Okay. I'm going to do something fucking terrible and awful at the same time. Those are cinnamon and synonyms, so that doesn't matter. I wonder if I could put cinnamon on carrots. That would taste good. I'll take juju here. I have zero. I think this is my first share of juju. And at the 8-7, I mean, I guess, right? I got him at pick 91. His ADP is 78.5, give or take, but who's counting? Uh, that's yeah, That'll probably be the only share of Juju I get this year. I, 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 Juju's just the like the fourth best pass-catching weapon on his team at this point. What a downfall for Juju. What a fucking downfall. Guy goes from like being the number one dynasty wide receiver two years ago to... Just really the the weapon four on his offense. Deontay Johnson, Chase Claypool, Najee Harris. Dare I dare I bring Heath Miller bike from the dead and just say he's better than Juju? I'm down. I'm down if you guys are. Let's handshake emoji it. Um Yeah, so I'm gonna do something that I uh that I will never do again. And I'm going to do it just for the sake of this video. But I have two Pittsburgh Steeler wide receivers. And I will take Ben Roethlisberger in the probably the last round. Because I don't have to use any more capital on it. Which is good. Because then I get to stack up middle round skill players. So I'm not opposed to this. Um, Big Ben might never enter my lineup with Kyler there anyways. No one's entering my lineup with Kyler there. I have so many flies in my fucking apartment. Okay. Uh... Where were we? I don't know. We're never anywhere. I don't know. Why. Like I, I, I asked if I was getting bites or something. Question, real quick. Uh, you guys think Pop Tarts are raviolis, or sometimes my brain is just too fucking big, you know? Pop Tarts are absolutely raviolis, so I don't even want you to answer that question couple of the margs i had today i'll show you guys the margs i had today if you guys aren't following me on instagram uh that's where i'd be posting all my all my marg scores what do we have today oh no well, we'll have to go through my story uh you guys don't want to see it so actually see this is what i fucking love about new york man i wake up and i walk to get my coffee and this is what i see on the ground fucking movie ted number three coming soon oh we're almost hype Saw a city bike in the bushes. Hella rude. Uh, where was I? That's what I had for breakfast today. Shit was popping as always. Where was I? Okay, so I went to this place, Dante. Great cocktail place in New York. They had uh, so I ordered so I ordered the house margarita. Right? How I do this is how I how I rate my margaritas. And yeah, make sure you follow me on Instagram if you want to if you want to know all the fucking ratings around the city. I'm trying I'm trying one marg till we've tried them all. Ooh, some interesting players still left. Okay, cool. So I'm going to be deciding between Higby and Jarvis Landry here, unless there's someone really catch my running bike right now. Now nah, there's still a few guys I could still take there. I feel really good with my four running backs right now. Saquon, <coughs> Saquon Chris Carnley, Chris Car Carson, Javante, Darrell Henderson. My wide receiver stinks, so we're going to keep padding the wide receivers, and we'll go with Jarvis Landry here. I hope Tyler Higby falls to me in the 10th. Um, my name is just Nick Ercolano on Instagram, same as on Twitter, at Nick Ercolano. So I went to Dante, right? And I was like, I everywhere I go, I try the house margarita. That's the first thing I try. 
because I want to keep it straight across all across all scorings, right? Like Marg ratings. I need to try the house margarita and that's it. Nothing else. Just give me your best normal margarita and we rate them all around the city. I ordered the house Marg and she comes she comes bike with this. And there's a fucking pineapple in it. And I'm pissed because I know this place is like really well known for its cocktails. And I'm like, dude, I wanted a house margarita. Make me a normal margarita or I'll fucking kill you. No. I said, whatever. We'll get we'll get it on the next round. Um, see, I don't want pineapple. I don't want strawberry. I don't want jalapeno or spicy. The, I can have those. I can have those after I've tried and rated the regular house margarita. Okay. But I need the house mark first. So I tried the pineapple one and I'm like, holy shit. Okay. There's probably a reason why this one's the house mark. It was fucking flames. It got an 8.1. And for the record, I've never given above a nine. I'm yet to, I'm, I'm yet to give above a nine, but the summer is young. And I'm pretty young, relatively. I'll probably die soon from the margarita intake. But before then, I hope to encounter a nine. Eight one, their house marg got a seven, I think it was a seven six. Very good off the, off the rip. They had a whole menu of different drinks. And now next time I go, I could start di- diving into the other drinks. I'm not just a marg guy. But if it's the first time I've been to a place, I need to have the house marg first, rate it, and then we can move around. You know, I'm versatile, right? I'm like, uh, I'm like what Travis Etienne's about to be in Jacksonville, okay? We can go from a marg to a strawberry marg, to a fucking skirt this way, to an espresso martini, to a Moscow mule if you want to get a little refreshment. You know what I'm saying? you got to have that in the repertoire. But you've got to have principle. you got to have principle when you're doing the rating systems. Okay? If any of you guys have been to New York and you have a, a marg that I need to try, let me know. For now, let's get back to fantasy football. All right. Uh... Did we take Cortland Sutton? No, we didn't. Noah Fant. I feel like there's a little bit of a drop off in tears here after Noah Fant. So I'm going to take Noah Fant here because there's no one I love at wide receiver at the moment. Uh, yes. Yeah, again, I've, I've talked about this in a lot of my videos, and this this is why I draft on underdog because it really prepares you for the drafts that you're gonna do when you're in like a more serious league, right? When real redraft leagues come around, if you're drafting three or four running backs or five running backs or whatever, it's really important to know where you need to stop drafting them, right? Like you want to have four to five comfortable running backs on your roster, regardless of what type it is, best ball, redraft, whatever. And that that last running back you draft has to have some volume attached to its name, right? And this is where, after drafting on underdog week after week after week, we start to pick up on the trends, which is why you guys should click the link down below and download the fucking app and sign up and use promo code BDG and come draft with me. I post it on Twitter, so make sure you're following me on Twitter. Um, filled. This is what happens, guys. If you try to get in the drafts with me, I post the links on Twitter. But it fills up really quickly. Uh, if you click it after it's already filled, it's going to take you to the homepage. And then you guys are going to think that Snacks runs the IT department. I know I'm bad at business, but I'm not that bad. Filled. Got to be quicker on the trigger, Finja. Okay. Uh, so you, you guys start to know now that the last of the running backs that you want to roster go off the board in the ninth and 10th round. Okay. The Zach Mosses, the James Connor, maybe you don't really want them, but they're the last of the volume breed. They're the last of a, they're the last of a dying breed. Okay. Zach Moss, James Connor. They're like polar bears. Leonard Fournette, AJ Dillon. Don't love that. Melvin Gordon, Gus Edwards, all guys that are going to get volume. Latavius Murray. I think it's a pretty, the sharp man, the sharp is, the Sharp is uh, making some sharp picks. Uh, Latavius Marriott gets a little bit of a boost with Michael Thomas out, I believe, because they're going to have to depend even more on their run game. So with that being said, this is where you need to be taking you know, your fourth or fifth running back if you are going to be waiting on running back. You need to make sure you kind of cap out that position by this round because once you get to round 11 or 12, I still like David Johnson, and I will take him as my RB5 if he drops him here because he's going to get a lot of volume in Houston. But after that, I mean, I, I'm not, I'm not confident that. Fuck you, Sharp. I'm not confident that Hines, Singletary, Mattis, these guys get volume. I'm really not. I'm a little confident Jamal Williams does. I guess I would take Williams or Hines, but like I don't really give a fuck about either of them. 
I like Marvin Jones. I hope Marvin Jones falls to me here. Oh, Adam Troutman's interesting too now because Michael Thomas is gone. I actually think this is an easy smash on Troutman with Thomas gone. He should see a pretty hefty target share. Even if it even if it bumps up his target share from like three like three or four percent, that's a massive, massive jump up on tight end targets. That's such a big difference because tight end targets are, are pretty minimal to begin with, right? Like only a few guys, handful of guys are going to pop off over 100 targets in a given year. So for him to see, you know, if Michael Thomas was going to get 140, 150 targets, even if he sees 30 of those targets, that's huge. That's massive. So that, that feels pretty good. I feel okay about my tight end core, even though we faded all the way until round like 10 on the tight ends. So we got Noah Fant, 13 picks behind his ADP. We got Troutman ahead of his ADP, but that's only because it hasn't re-updated yet with the Michael Thomas news. Now, we will continue to stock up wide receivers from here on out probably for a while because we know that we're going to be taking Big Ben to stack with the wide receivers. And you start three wide receivers in this format, and you only start two running backs. So with the way wide receivers in fantasy work, all the mid-round wide receivers pretty much end up scoring the same amount of fantasy points in terms of like points per game. So it doesn't really fucking matter who you take here. You just need to take a lot of them because a few, a handful of them will pop off and give you those big weeks. But we already have our solid running back production week in and week out. We have our quarterback production week in and week out. And that feels pretty good. What do we like on the board here? Let's, let's, let's do some in-depth analysis. Matt Ryan, absolutely hate this year in fantasy football. He was only good because he, he literally led the NFL in pass attempts last year. I don't think enough people are understanding he did this with Dirk Cutter. He did it with Julio Jones. His efficiency was not... He was like the Adam Thielen of quarterbacks. He had the highest passing volume. Everything else, receptions, whatever, yards for Adam Thielen was like 25th. Matt Ryan, outside of the top 12 in terms of all those things that aren't volume related. So no, we are not taking Matt Ryan. We are taking Marvin Jones. Marvin Jones, one of the best value plays in best ball drafts got him at pick 139 his ADP is pick 115 and you love to see that uh yeah so Matt Ryan I'm so far fuck I, th I feel like he's just going to be like 212 yards and a, and a touchdown every game and that's just like that is just absolutely draining to your fantasy team you need ceiling especially in these one quarterback leagues you need ceiling week in and week out uh Kirk I like Kirk more than Matt Ryan because nothing changes in Kirk's offense Nothing at all changes in Kirk's offense, and he was fine last year. Fitzpatrick, a lot of good weapons, gives you some rushing upside, so I don't hate Fitzpatrick. Uh, Baker, I think, is in for a big bounce bike, and I might eh, I might think about taking Baker to stack with Jarvis Landry there. Uh, I think in the same analysis I gave with Jarvis Landry, Baker fits that mold as well, too. They had those three hurricane games where their stats were absolutely plummeted, and so it looks like their season stats were shitty, but uh, both of them are better players when you take out those three stats games that shouldn't count and you just look at the other 11 12 games that they played in uh their per game numbers are are pretty fucking good and i think they're in for a good season because that offense is just going to be very very efficient second year in uh what the fuck's his names i forget who the coach is yeah i know it's kevin stefanski i know you guys are whispering this is you know what i used to like i, I you know i did these for a long time i've been doing these drafts before they were underdog fantasy when they were actually draft like draft.com and I did them like this where I would film them the day before and then just put them up as a YouTube video. And I did that for like years. And then uh, recently, the last like month or two, I've been doing them as live streams. And you guys agitate the fuck out of me. All right. You guys give me stress and you fucking bully me and you make fun of me. And uh, and I'm, I'm done with it. I'm fucking done with it. All right. So now I'm just filming them myself and I could just speak thoroughly like a fucking king. Speaking of king, uh, I wore a necklace today. And I feel like a douchebag. I don't know why. Is there a reason why wearing a necklace should make me feel like a douche? I don't wear jewelry ever. I literally, I don't wear, this is a fucking hairband from a girl. I I will, I will pick up a rubber band off the street and put it on my wrist uh, before I put jewelry on my wrist. And this is the first time maybe in my life, like maybe I was like 12 once and put a necklace on or something, that I wore a necklace. Uh, and I feel like it looked kind of good. And I might double up. I might. I feel like one necklace looks weird. Not weird, but weird-ish. I, I think I'm going to get a second one that's a little bit longer. You know? You got to have layers. There's layers and levels to this shit. All right? 
So I think I'm going to double down on it. And I know you guys can probably barely see it, but if you can see it, someone, if there's a therapist out there, let me know why I feel like a douchebag wearing a necklace. Okay. Um, anyways, what the fuck was I talking about? Yeah. So if we, if this was live streaming, you guys would probably make fun of me for wearing a necklace. You'd probably make fun of me for, uh, I don't know, something else. You find something, you find something to do to hurt my self-esteem. Where was I? Ooh, ooh, damn. I was hoping Jamal Williams fell to me there. Uh, Madison. Uh, see, this is the fucking problem. Like, you literally are not going to get volume from any of these dudes. Maybe J.D. McKissick. I think I kind of still like J.D. McKissick. For as much shit as people give him. You guys bully me and you bully J.D. McKissick. Me and J.D. McKissick, realistically, same person. You've never seen us in the same room at the same time, have you? No. Nah, no, you haven't. Therefore, join the fucking squad. 13th round, J.D. McKissick might actually be the worst pick in, in fantasy football history. Fuck. I'm losing it. The marks are starting to get to my brain tentacles. Whew. Whew. I got to take this tweet down because people are just going to start getting mad at me. Uh, let's keep going down the player list. I forgot. Okay. Uh. Let's go to the running back. Yeah, he's clearly just a handcuff to Dalvin Cook, and I honestly don't even know if he's really their main handcuff anymore. James White, awful, awful contract. I'm not really sold that James White is going to be as – I feel like he's just a veteran presence at this point. I'm not sure he's going to be as involved in the offense this year as he has in the previous years. I think they've talked up Ramondre Stevenson as a good pass catcher. I wouldn't be surprised if Stevenson gets a little work on the third downs. Darren, uh, Darrington Evans is like a shit version of Alexander Madison where he's strictly a handcuff and he's way smaller. Geo – might not make the team. Philip Lindsay, he is not elusive. Uh, he's a terrible pass catcher, and you're going to need that if you're in Houston because they're going to be trailing a lot, and they are not going to be good on offense. They're going to have a lot of defenders in the backfield. So that's going to be a problem when it comes to Philip Lindsay. Uh, that is just not a good situation for him to be in. Chuba, strictly a handcuff to C-Mac. Xavier Jones, interesting pick because if you have Darrell Henderson like I do, you won't be taking him in best ball. You probably want to shoot for upside in best ball. In regular season-long leagues, I like taking handcuffs, okay? If I take uh, Zeke, I'm fine taking Tony Pollard, et cetera, et cetera. One, though, you have to know who the handcuff is. So I'm not going to be drafting Xavier Jones right now. Uh, one, because in best ball, I am not – you don't do handcuffs, okay? Because that just burns a roster spot. You need every single one of these roster spots. They're really important. But in season long, obviously, you could drop, pick up players, start – the sit start is obviously major where you don't have to actually do that This in, uh, in best ball in these formats. So he does not become uh, a player that you want because we, don't, we have no idea what the roles are going to be in this Rams backfield. So Xavier Jones gets spicy there. What else do we got here? Okay, so we have one quarterback. We have four or five running backs. We have five wide receivers and two tight ends. So we're going to need to go to the to the wide receiver position. Oh, look at Christian Kirk sitting there looking all fucking double-cheeked up on a Sunday night. And I got Kyler Murray. We've got D Hop. We've got Christian Kirk. Maybe fucking AJ Green, the God, will fall bike to me down at like round 16 or 17. Things are getting spicy. I also like Yami Brown a little bit. Uh, it's pretty ugly after that. Let's go down this wide receiver list and give my thoughts on these guys. Cole Beasley's an absolute psychopath. John Brown, uh, while I do think he can be the one there in Las Vegas, I think we'll have seen a much better season out of Nelson Aguilar. I feel like people are kind of preaching like the one-for-one -one swap off, like John Brown's just going to do what Nelson Aguilar did last year. I don't think that's the case. I think uh, both Henry Ruggs and Edwards were rookies last year, so they should be more acquainted. I think they're going to use them differently this year, which is can't be any worse than last year. And Brian Edwards, uh, or... I was going to say John Brown. I think he's got a tougher path to be the one there than uh, most people are giving credit for. And he's old, man. Nelson Aguilar is still in his prime-ish. John Brown's like pretty old, and he's coming off of an, another injury riddled season. So I'm a little bit weary on John Brown. Brian, uh, Brian Edwards, not really high on him either because he showed us literally fucking nothing last year. So you are projecting uh, something that you're just you're just you're just fucking poofing this out of thin air if you're expecting a Brian Edwards breakout. I know he's got the prospect profile, but like we didn't see a fucking thing from him last year. Uh, Rashad Perriman and Amon Ross St. Brown. You see both of them on the screen. I think they're both worth taking shots on in the 16th, 17th, 18th round of these drafts because someone's going to have to catch the ball out there in Detroit. Can't all go to TJ Hawkins and DeAndre Swift. I know everyone's like, DeAndre Swift's going to have a 20% target share. Like, dude, that's unrealistic. No running back ever has a fucking 20% target share, okay? 
So some wide receiver is going to have to take 18% of the targets. Another one's going to have to take 16% of them. And since they're a shitty team, they're going to pass a lot. So that percentage target share is going to be a high fucking number. I think it's worth diversifying the revenue on both Perriman and Amon Ross St. Brown. I would probably take Perriman because, listen, they went out and signed the guy. And uh, Amon Ross St. Brown was a fourth-round pick, okay? He was a day three pick. Crowder, I have, I can't, I can't believe he's still getting drafted in drafts. I'm not sure why. Uh, Terrell Williams, uh, he, he, okay, I just made a whole fucking spiel about the Tyrell Williams or the Detroit thing, but Terrell Williams, I feel like hasn't played in four years. I wouldn't be surprised if he's just like dead, and no one actually knows. Like someone fake signed his contract. I'm like really about to stack up AJ Green again. I think, and I like fucking just do me a favor and don't make fun of me, please. Thank you. Thank you. AJ. AJ, baby. Come to daddy. Come to daddy. Oh, Big Ben. So if, Imagine someone actually snipes Ben for me. That'd be fucking absurd. Someone probably is. Someone, I bet you fucking assholes probably just sit there. Listen, if, if Kyler's going to have as big of a season as I think he's going to have, then these stacks are fucking shmoney. These are called the shmoney stacks. I really just can't hammer home this, this like enough. Like, these are his per-game numbers last year. First of all, from weeks 1 through 16, right? That's fantasy season. Kyler Murray was the number one overall player in fan in fantasy. He didn't play week six, uh, 17 because he got hurt, and that's when Josh Allen jumped him. But if we are looking at uh, ESPN, Yahoo, ESPN's minus 2 for interceptions, Yahoo's minus 1, so we'll go to the minus plus 4, minus 2. Guys, first 10 weeks of the season, he got hurt. He got hurt in week 11. Like, the numbers are fucking asinine. Asinine. Y'all didn't think I had that in my vocab, did you? Did you now? Um. Okay, where are we at? So there we have Gio Bernard. Not a fan. Kenny Gainwell. Not a fan. Not his rookie year, at least. Amon Ra. I like him. Crowder. I just, I just, I don't know. I see him being phased out of the offense by like week eight. Philip Lindsay. Marquez Valdez Scantling. I don't hate. What do you guys? What are you guys thinking about that? Uh, about the double post up from Green Bay. What do you guys think about? Aaron Rodgers and Devontae Adams both putting up the last dance pictures on their Instagram story. The way I interpreted that was that they're like, fuck the front office, just like in the last dance. We're going to run it bike one more time. We're going to run it bike one more time. This is our last dance together, and then we're going to figure it out afterwards. So I think that I think they're coming back to Green Bay. I think Devontae Adams uh, chopped off the – long-term talks because him and Aaron were both like, we're done here after this year. So they're going to run it back one more time. And that means everyone in the green Bay offense is a steal. And I like Mark has about the scantling where he just went at the 15, 12 a lot. Kadarius Tony, not a good pick. Demarcus Robinson. Eh, I don't mind it. Malcolm Brown. I wouldn't be surprised if Malcolm Brown ended this year with like seven rushing touchdowns. Would anyone really be surprised? No. He's probably going to be the goal line back. All right, boys. Uh, do I wait? I probably can't. I don't want to risk this. Ugh, this is me sitting here talking about risking a pick on Ben. I might take Taysom Hill as well just to uh, give me a little bit of insurance on that quarterback spot. Because he might not start, but if he does, he's got obviously a lot of upside. They had a bunch of like 25-point games last year. But at this point in the draft, it's all fucking disgusting. It's all disgusting. And you all out there listening right now that haven't signed up for Underdog also fucking disgust me. Disgust me like this fucking shirt I've been wearing for the entire weekend. Ah, fuck. You know who I just met up with today? For those of y'all that are like OOGs to the channel. When we were actually, you don't even really need to be an OOG for this. But when I was, uh, you can follow our brand on Instagram as well. It's just BDGE double double underscore. Um, when we were interviewing interns a couple of years ago, when we first moved into the HQ in Manhattan, right before COVID, when we were actually going to hire interns, you guys remember I did like live streams of the interviews for the interns, which is hell of, actually what might've been one of my most enjoyable pieces of content I've ever made. Let me see if I can pull these up. Where art? Where art thou? Yeah, honestly, I still think about female Dak. By the way, I still think about her. 
I'd risk it all for female Dak. You're right, Codeine. Where are these? Where are you? Or maybe it's on my personal Instagram. Am I tripping? Am I tripping? Skirt. Yeah, here it is. Oh, no. That's the wrong guy. Y'all remember Luca? Luca the goat? I hung out with Luca today. He was in New York. And he hit me up. We had a nice little uh, nice little hangout session at Washington Square Park today. He's working full-time for FanDuel right now, which is pretty neat. Um, yeah, I don't know why the fuck I just told you that, but shout out to Luca. Also, also shout out to, if you guys are in the Discord, we have a channel where uh, where you're only allowed to post margaritas. Let me see if I can pull, put it on the screen. Actually, I don't know if you guys can see it. Let me pull up the disky. There we go. We got a Margs only channel. And if you want access to this, patreon.com forward slash BDGE. We got a Margs only channel. And you have to, you have to, uh, you know, you throw your Margs in there and you rate, rate them. And someone, uh, shout out to underscore I am Lord. Unbelievable tattoo of a Marg. Said the forever Marg. Thanks for the inspiration. I, I got a Marg tatted on my forearm. I'm sure you guys knew that, but now we're out here. Everyone's getting tatted on their on their fucking forums with marks, and I'm not sure whether to be proud of that. It's an absurd tattoo like in the best way possible. Shout out to you. Uh, oh, fucking motherfucker. They took Van Jefferson. All right, I was actually going to take Nico Collins there. Oh, other interesting trade that happened. Uh, Anthony Miller goes to Houston. So let's talk about that for a sec. Anthony Miller is a guy that I feel like I will forever love. I loved him so much coming out of Memphis. I just thought he was a dog. I thought that dude just had a knack for the end zone. I was like, he's going to ball out regardless of what team he's on, regardless of what quarterback he plays for. And then he goes to the combine. <coughs> Excuse me. Goes to the combine, tests out really well as a slot receiver, super agile, comes in his rookie year, scores seven touchdowns. And I'm like, yep, this is Anthony Miller. Here's the fucking thing. Second round pick. He's getting old there. He's 27. Yeah, he hasn't been great on the NFL field. Here's the thing. We want to talk about, like, you know, get Allen Robinson a quarterback. Get down our Darnell Mooney a quarterback. How come Anthony Miller don't get that same fucking energy? How come Anthony Miller doesn't get the same get him a quarterback energy? Okay? Fuck y'all. Where was you when I was slumming Anthony Miller? Where the fuck were you? I'm in on Anthony Miller. Oh. Actually, it's hard to be fucking in because they don't actually have a quarterback either. God damn it. Situation might have got worse in Houston. Goes to Houston. Sean Watson's bike, though. Anthony Miller, goat. Goat. Top 24 wide receiver. Put in the bag. Put in the bag. If Deshaun Watson's bag. They, uh, we, had, we had some news on Deshaun Watson today. It was something that he's reporting to training. He's reporting to some camp. I don't think that fucking matters. So, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not going to speculate it. It came out today, and I've been fucking drinking Mark, so I don't, I don't, I'm don't. i not going to be able to tell you something good. I apologize. All right, so we got two quarterbacks. We got two tight ends. Should I take another quarterback just in case all the quarterbacks are off the board? Do we have any pieces of Detroit? No, we did not, so I'm not going to go with Jared Goff. Otherwise, everybody's fucked on this list. Harry Cohen is basically dead. I've been taking a lot of 18th-round Marlon Mack. He's an RB1 if Jonathan Taylor goes down. He really is. Probably not. Old Mod Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus. That's my fucking guy right now. For no reason other than he's just on Atlanta and I like him as a player. Pretty athletic guy too, though. He's a speedster. Let's uh let's jump into a little Olamide. 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 Depending on what part of the country you're from. I like this dude. I like this. He was a very good deep threat in uh in college at Virginia. He was, he was a playmaker. Now he's gonna get a shot with Julio gone. Uh, and that's it. All right. Uh, I got to get the fuck out of here because I got to go to bed soon because I'm fucking dis- ex- absolutely exhausted. Long weekend, uh, but we got a good week ahead of us. So thank you all for joining me today for this mock draft on Underdog. And again, these are not actually mock drafts. I just use that for SEO purposes. So thank you for clicking on my channel. Thank you for clicking on my video. If you're new, make sure you subscribe to the channel. If you uh, enjoyed the video, hit the thumbs up button. We're going to be doing mock drafts every Monday and then regular player analysis videos every Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, that kind of shit. All right. Uh, We're just going to be doing a lot of it this season. So thumbs up. 
subscribe, and obviously download the Underdog app. It'll be the first link in the description. It'll take you to the iOS store. It'll take you to the Google store, the Android store, whatever the fucking weirdos call it. And uh, use promo code BDGE when you deposit 10 bucks, and they're going to give you $25 free on top of that to draft with. I'll see you in the next draft, hopefully. I love y'all. Good night, good riddance, and good day to Anthony Miller, new wide receiver too.